I'm Father Ron Matthews, and I work with the sick and terminally ill. One of the important issues that I'd like to share with you today concerns euthanasia, assisted suicide, and my sister. Fortunately, she is not a victim of euthanasia or assisted suicide. She ends up in the hospital. She's there for two weeks, and I get an urgent text that she has taken a turn for the worse. So I hop in my car, and I drive a very long distance. And when I get there, she's in the hospital. I don't know how serious yet. The next day, the doctor comes in. You know how they make their daily visit. He gets the family out in the hallway, away from my sister, and tells us that she has a, an advanced lung disease, and she has about two days to live. Two days to... Can you imagine how that hit us? We were floored by that. Now, he doesn't go in and tell her this. He leaves that up to us. And so we hear this. And my sister, meanwhile, is making plans on going home. She really thinks that she's going to be going home in just any time now. She's going to be discharged and go home. The doctor says, no way. <laughs> she's not going to be here very long. We really labored over this and emotionally. How do we tell her that she's not going to leave this hospital? So uh, my brother and I take a moment with her a couple of days later. It's been four days now instead of the two. And um, we um, tell her that the doctor says, you're not going to survive this. And of course, it was a shock to her because she thought she'd be going home any minute. And of course, she uh, understandably was upset about this. She seemed to take it pretty well. So we're there and we're praying with her and she actually, you know, she's Catholic. She's a, like I am. She grew up in the Catholic Church. So she went to confession. She received Holy Communion. She was ready to go. And meanwhile, we're laboring over this whole deal. All of a sudden, the doctors and the nurses, they're all excited about doing something. Now, she's been there for days, for two weeks at least. All of a sudden... Now they bring in the oxygen machine and they bring in medications and they, they start treating her and taking care of her, things that they haven't done since she arrived. And this was quite puzzling to me. Why didn't they do this earlier? Why did they wait until family members are present in order to do something about it, in order to act, in order to, to show that you are going to do something instead of just sitting by watching her die? It was a question in my mind. I have learned since that that's kind of common, that if the family does not get involved in the care of their loved one, then that loved one just very well might experience neglect. And it can actually become euthanasia, you know, or if the person wants it, suicide. My sister made it very clear. She wanted them to take every effort. She, they want, she wanted them to do all they could to keep her going, to keep her alive. And we told the doctors that. And the doctor that told her she had only two days, he kind of scoffed at that, said, there's no way, you know, she's not going to live very long. But we made it clear that we wanted every everything, whatever it takes for her to be treated properly. So we hoped and prayed that she would get better. As I'm making this video, that was eight months ago, <laughs> eight months ago, and she's still living. But if our family had not gotten involved, had not shown up, been at the hospital, asked questions, what are you doing? What is, what is the treatment? Do you have a treatment plan here? See, all of a sudden the doctor started showing up, you know, and he would explain what's going on. And so, we were involved, and that's the one advice that I would give any family. If you have a loved one in the hospital, then you have to be involved because if the hospital, if it's left up to the hospital, who knows what's going to happen? Will they do the treatment? Will they just kind of sit by and let your loved one pass on? I mean, what's going to, what's going to be? The result, and I wonder if we had not been there, if I had not made that trip over there, if my brother and her daughter had not been in 
that hallway talking to that doctor and letting him know we want to know what's going on. If we had not followed her, I mean, they took her from that hospital. It was time for her to leave the hospital. They took her to a rehab center. They took her to a rehab center that has a ventilator, thinking that she was going to go on a ventilator. Never happened. She never went to a ventilator. And so it is that uh, she is still alive here at this moment, eight months later. I thank God that he uh, made it possible for our family to be there for her and with her and to walk with her during this process, or she would not be with us today. God bless you. Thank you for listening.